Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, changing things up from the normal pattern I'm in so far with the uh, reaction and thoughts on one division episodes. We'll be getting to that today as well, recording. I'll record a few of those today. But uh, probably, as you can see from the title and thumbnail, I just wanted to cover the whole Lola Bunny thing I heard going around before I reviewed anybody else's thoughts on it and just give my own uh, ju just because the topic interests me like i will go into it later but like briefly the character has been around for well, uh, the entirety of my life so yeah i just want to talk about that uh again i want to make this as easy as possible myself so this is gonna have few edits as possible and i'll try and you know, not uh, dilly dally too long or get lost in thought and hopefully not mess up too often and have to cut things out. So I really just want to like encode this, do the thumbnail, upload it, be done with it. And to that end, no more stalling about. I'm just going to go into it and start with just covering a few dismissals of people having a problem with this that you know, I believe are somewhat in bad faith and just, uh, you know, g explain why they don't really, aren't really applicable to me in this instance. Uh, first and foremost, you know, people saying, oh, you're just going to be mad because the no longer the things there on the little chest area that you enjoy. And to that, I say, my first serious crush was Jinx from the original Teen Titans show. So like, no, that's not an issue for me. That's most distinctly not an issue. Also, next <laughs> next point of that, to just the common dismissals. You think I'm going to the film? That? Like, directly to the film? Like, no. There's a plethora of sites to go to for that. that I can get either for previously existing stuff, stuff inspired by the film, or just they put out around the same time as the film, because it seems beneficial to do. Like, there are numerous options for me. And even if, like I was going to say a bunch of names in this one, names, they are to be for this one, or not to be. Oh, I had that pun in my head, I really screwed it up. They are to be. Like, even if I was strand, uh, stranded on a desert island with that image, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, they took away the things on the chest and... You either made the feet bigger to either scale off the foot crowd or keep it in line with bugs as well. Like, not only still drawn the same way in terms of, you know, a relatively pretty Antho character, it's like, she has noticeably more junk in the trunk. Not just as good, but more. Like, it could have been like, um, bold stance on the designer of the character for this one to make a point could have been could have been what the writers wanted of the of this design or the person they gave it to was just an ass man like honestly can't tell which is which oh god i want to clean my glasses but i'm not going to because i want to just get this done in one i just want as few edits as possible in this one yeah and furthermore like to the next point of just dismissal, because like I don't want to be too gross in this section, but like people will just like shoot down any criticism of the film over this with these things. Like honestly, if they do just want to focus on the character, like I think sh things like Life is Strange has proved like you don't need to give them an outrageous body for people to fall in love with the character and thus seek out. A bunch of adult content of them. If you do a good job of, you know, making the character loved, there is going to be an avalanche of it, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. That's pretty much just the this one. So it's based on solely sexuality. Uh, going on to the next one of like, why are you paying attention so much to this one character in this film? And to that I say. Lola kind of, she transcended the film in terms of like popularity and relevance while still remaining tied to it. 
a tidbit I wanted to say to make myself uh, make myself sound smart a bit. I messed that up. Yeah, this is awkward. Like, honestly, like if there was no character of Lola at all, it's hard to say if a sequel would be as viable as an option, because she has kept it relevant just via her existence alone in pop culture for far longer than it would have otherwise. Like, part of that is just loving as a character, and part of it is like the adult content thing, and. There's not necessarily something wrong with that. It's just like this uh, sequel or reboot wouldn't be as viable without her existence. It's like, again, all the coverage this movie is getting right now because of her. Like, like honestly, I don't. <laughs> Warning if you want, don't want to be reminded of your age if you're older than me, but like, this film, from the brief Google I did, came out around the same time, not as I was born, but would have been conceived. Like, this film ex has existed for longer than I have been alive, and it is still relevant and thought of on a regular basis. Because of Lola. And like that also ties into like why people aren't so invested in this particular character and giving us so much attention. She is somewhat of an icon and a significant part of people's lives. Like, I know it doesn't feel like that to some people, you know, a bit older, who you know she has been around for uh, quite as long as she has been proportional to your lifespan, but like there are a lot of people who grew up with her as kids back all the way in the 90s and at least like two generations of kids who have been born with her existing like since they they came into this world she has become somewhat of a, like I said, icon to some people, not major way, not doubtful or a keystone of their existence, but still of some significance and beauty. Moving on, after having clear my throat and then getting lost in thought for a second, I'm gonna do hard edit here. Like, the main source is of whatever sex appeal Lola does have, not to be dismissive, but like, that's not grody. Oh, I'm such a child sometimes. Such a child. It's not so much... The film, you know, uh, Space Jam, overly framed in a certain way, it's just like... Fundamentally, she was... Just drawn that way. Like, the observes to uh, provide, uh, not only a... Uh, neat, uh... I don't want to say joke. I. Reference? Anyway, it also serves to provide contrast. Because, like, Jessica Rabbit, Rabbit is, like, definitely hypersexualized by design. Like, people have actually sat down to do the physics to prove that she would not be able to actually walk. She would topple over if she was a real person. Whereas, like, just... Lola just has a certain energy and charm about her, but otherwise, the way she is drawn is just somewhat provocative, but, you know, it's just like a reasonably young, healthy, athletic individual. She's not outrageously voluptuous like Jessica Rabbit. She's just kind of physically fit. I have to specify that because it's slang in the UK. You know why? She's just active physically, you know, gets good exercise, and that shows on a relatively deep frame. And then we go into the, you know, what's it, um, clothing choice, which she prefers, which then carries over to the, you know, 
outfit because it's just not outfit uh sports god i i suck at sports demonology the, the uniform the uniform it's basically just her normal clothes made into a uniform ow ba, 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 i'm struggling now adhd i hate it sometimes where was i oh yes and that then commenting on the clothes says like, oh, why did you draw this way? And it's like, wait, then you get into the debate of why, why can't women wear these clothes without being objectified, you know, like. like it, it then quickly becomes a more complicated issue discussing the way society views people and, you know, um, slut shaming. Besides the fact, like, you know, they just want to wear makes them happy it, it becomes a whole issue especially when you're talking about a fictional character you're very much making active choices about how they appear and like just covering all that in terms of the dismissals and moving on to actual peak it's like okay if they wanted to make this character you know what's it better in a modern sense you know like what's being an individual and not a hypersexualized object, it's like, okay, yeah, the fan base did respond to that way, but like in the visual context of the film, that was kind of her whole character motivation. Like, she wasn't just an object and she wasn't limited in any way for being a girl. Like, that's the her whole motivation in the film is to just not so much prove, but just exist as a person who is not diminished or, you know, in a, unequal to a man in any way or an object for them. It's kind of the whole point they get across as the, you know, um, the film. And, and I took that away from it as a kid. Sure, like, came out in the 90s, it's not perfect, but keep in mind, this is Space Jam. We are incredibly lucky. Yeah, I say even blessed that it came out good in any way whatsoever at all. Like just just play Mad Libs with the base concept of the film. Like the Animaniacs are being attempted to be kidnapped by demons from hell. To, you know, be entertainment in a nightclub. And the only way out of that is play a game of field hockey. And they thus recruit... Uh, Tired player who was flunking out in, say, Batminton, played by Tom Holland. You know, to get out of it somehow. And then you have, like, Bill Murray for the scene. Not, not as a character that was hyped up in any way. Not, to, not as devil or anything, just Bill Murray randomly in the scene. We are so lucky that it was decent. God, uh, yeah. God, I have two thoughts. I don't know which one I want to talk about. I'll go for the shorter one first. Um, basically, it's like everything I mentioned before. Like, if you did just want to do the base premise of the character from the original film, but put more emphasis and focus on that, like, just diminishing and frankly enhancing her waist it's like it's completely arbitrary I don't understand especially because like as I said she was not outrageously designed as a lot of other characters are in fact because you know they were taking cues from a lot of celebrities at the time who were because some of the biggest icons back then were very slender themselves like again I'm repeating myself but they're not outrageously designed. Lola wasn't, uh, Crystal Fox wasn't. Was it, was it that same Fox or just Crystal? But anyway, commonly to Fox as well, a lot of Foxes. Like, none of them were outrageously done, despite some of the fan art going that way, but that's just how the adult fan art works. People just exaggerate stuff like that all the time. So, Focusing on making a better character by, you know, changing proportions like that seems completely arbitrary because it fundamentally has no impact 
on what you're doing for the character itself. And, you know, part of me wants to be like, uh, well, jumping down to here, whatever your proportions you give, you just have to focus on them as a character in the story. It doesn't matter however you draw them or whoever you have cast to play them. Like, you just gotta do a good job of that. And part of me, the sinister part of my brain figures they did this, well, half thinks they did this to just like, capitalize on this publicity that would it, it would uh, entail but then that part of me also says that this is far far more hassle than it's worth given the core fan base of this film and character it's like sure it gets you a lot of headlines but like you risk biting the hand that feeds you you know like all they have to do is focus on doing a good job of the character and this change does feel good arbitrary but more importantly the main problem i have with this is not so much within the film itself but in the larger context of uh what well, politics right now because like ah, God, i can't remember if it was director but it came out with just like it is currently 2021 you know and we want to focus on her character which again ah, not again i will just be repeating myself but like to date this a bit, right now, there is a huge waves within the, at least in America, within the uh, right-leaning conservative section politics, of people just lashing out against cancellations of them. Or, well, yeah, just cancellations of Mr. Potato, Dr. Seuss, the Muppets, and all that other stuff, because, like, the presidential election cycle is over. It's a long way before the next one kicks in. It's still some time before people really start caring about the next Senate and House runs coming up. So right now, they are just trying to prop themselves up with uh, cultural issues. And this just seems to play into it. Like, this just gives them ammunition to work with, especially if the film does turn out bad. Like, this will just be used in as an example of uh, woke culture gone bad yet again. Again, edit, uh, where was I? Ammunition. Yeah, this will just be used as ammunition to radicalize people. I'm sure, it won't be on the same scale as, say, political things, but again, they rely on cultural world, uh, wars to motivate their base. And like there's a lot more TV shows and video games and pieces of entertainment than they are politicians. And like when it comes to the right versus the left in terms of getting motivated and radicalized. Excuse me, a little bit. Who knows if that was the end. Now the left tends to get huge chunks of people motivated and engaged via like political things such as you know mess ups by politicians you know an unjust uh system or systemic issues in general that have been happening over a long course of time and people get motivated by that in huge waves whereas you know the right are reliant on smaller bursts of motivation uh, based on like outrage to basically any perceived slight against the culture and status of uh, the society. Like any attempt to change anything or admit something is wrong and needs to be improved is just something of an insult to them that has to be fought back against. So just anyone working on like a piece of media in any way at all do just think about like the optics when you're acting in like, good faith. I, I don't want to say anything about the people behind this. I haven't done research on that. Maybe I will if the film when the film comes out and talk more about it there. Just think about the optics of what you're doing. You want to make it as least viable as possible for it to become a cultural issue for people. Uh, get radicalized against 
just weigh out whether or not something will be worth it or not before jumping in head first with an idea. Because again, fundamentally, it, this seems very arbitrary to maintaining her as a good character. Or making an even better one. But, uh, um, just some final thoughts on just it as a concept. Like, typically, like when they try and do this, it, it, you know, making certain issues like this important, it's they do struggle to make it not an overwhelmingly defining feature of the life. Even if it is a problem, people affected by it still have other things that define them. But when it comes to media, like just by the nature of dramatization, like uh, it becomes the sole defining feature. That's not to say it shouldn't be represented, any any struggle whatsoever, that a vast portion of the population out there faces from LGBT issues to trans rights to minorities. It's just you have to find the balance of making it interesting, dramatic, and important to character, whilst out being the sole defining trait of the character. And the final thought, probably to be displayed via the thumbnail, but like, uh, beyond the whole proportions of this, that, or the other, uh, Lola, just looking at the difference between, like, the 96 one and the still promotion for the upcoming film, like, I haven't seen the trailer yet, but just the stills alone make me worry if the animation is going to be as good 20 plus years later, because like, you can just look at the old Lola and just see the lighting and shadows and attention to detail they were given to her. And then it, that brings back memories of just how good it was uh, in the original Space Jam. And just looking at the still of that one, they have the drop shadow effect sort of for, you know, the character. But like, it just looks kind of that is the best way I can put it. It doesn't look as luscious or as detailed. Like, that's me just comparing this one image to uh, the Lola one and just the memories I have of every other character. They seem to so alive and vibrant in the previous one, just even still images, whereas comparing the still here to the still in the old film, new film just doesn't pop as much. Anyhow, that's my family thoughts. I was hoping they would come out a little neater, but I'm still happy with that because, like, I wanted to get this recorded, you know, because it's topical right now and you know, it won't, won't hurt to, to throw this out and try and gain traction with it. But I am very much committed to these WandaVision episodes right now, and they are a lot more than a strain on the edit, you know, because, like, it's audio quality for multiple clips of myself talking and at hunting down the clips for the show, putting them in, resizing them, adding audio to it. It's a whole thing. And I'm hoping this will be a lot quicker, you know, and uh, yeah. The other call now is probably just going to be me struggling on the thumbnail. The two images of Love It Up. I'm calling that now. I had that idea before. I've been committing to it now. That's what the thumbnail is going to be. Uh, yeah, about to send you to the outro, which just covers some basic stuff, but otherwise, like I've been saying throughout this, the only action to one of his in probably will do a bit of a view once the, I've caught up with all of it and can really think about it as a whole, as opposed to from episode to episode. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing to that, if you like. Check it out. You know, already about to say it, but subscribe, you know. And uh, I also do a uh, gaming channel as well. Uh, what's it? A furry VTuber avatar, which is why I thought it would be good for me to cover this. Because, you know, two are connected, like same names. Well, the same character name in them. Uh, God, I'm overthinking the concept of this. Anyhow, 
gaming channel. I just recently finished up Ghost of Tsushima, nearing the end of Bloodborne, playing a nice little, I want to say, indie game called Monster Sanctuary. Going along well in that, and also playing through the Sly Cooper franchise right now. So yeah, check that out if any of that sounds interesting to you. Also do Bad Mod stuff, especially on Monday now, where I uh, Ghost of Tsushima what's it, uh, streams were. But yeah, that is pretty much everything that I can say right now. So, outro. Need to stare at the camera more. B. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time. Be sure to like, comment, share the video about the place, and to subscribe. And also, if you're feeling exceptionally generous, take a look at my Patreon. Thank you very much for your time. Ta-ta, the -ta, Until we meet again.